Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 21st of April. India adds nearly 300,000 new COVID cases. People rush to get vaccine. Sri Lanka observes second anniversary of 2019 Easter Sunday attacks. And Chadi procession honoring God of Rain kicks off in Nepal amid pandemic. And now for all the details. India reported more than 2,000 deaths from COVID-19 over the last 24 hours, the highest single day tally for the country so far. Coronavirus infections also rose by a record, increasing by 295,041. Major Indian cities were a deserted look as government across India have imposed local curbs. Amid the lockdown, Indians were seen queuing up at vaccination centres to get immunised as COVID-19 cases continue to mount in the country. India's coronavirus infections rose by a record, increasing by 295,041 over the last 24 hours, Health Ministry data showed on Wednesday. Major Indian cities, including capital New Delhi and Mumbai, wore a deserted look as governments across India imposed local curbs. Even as cases and deaths surged to record highs, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi earlier on Tuesday urged state governments to use lockdowns as the last resort to contain the spread of the second wave of COVID-19 infections. Amid the lockdown, Indians were seen queuing up at vaccination centres to get immunised as COVID-19 cases continue to mount in the country. The country also reported more than 2,000 deaths from COVID-19 over the last 24 hours, the highest single-day tally for the country so far. India's overall case tally is now 15.6 million, second only to the United States. This is my second dose, but uh, I, uh, for, for first dose also I had no problem. And hopefully I think uh, we'll not have any problem this time also. So I'll advise everybody to go in for vaccination as soon as possible. As authorities in several states have reported running out of medical oxygen, Prime Minister said the central government is working with states and private companies to ramp up the supply of oxygen as well as production and distribution of vaccines. Meanwhile, in a tragic incident, at least 22 patients died after an oxygen tank leaked at Zakir Hussain Hospital in Maharashtra State's Nasik City on Wednesday. As many as 171 patients were present in the hospital at the time of the incident. In news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has said that his government has no intention of lifting a ban on the tehreek e lubbagh Pakistan hours after the outfield called off its protest, which last week also took a violent turn. This came after the government submitted a resolution to the National Assembly about expulsion of the French ambassador, a key demand of the TLP over blasphemous caricatures of Islam's prophet in France. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Tuesday made it clear that the government had no intention of lifting a ban on the TLP, tehreek e labaik Pakistan, hours after the banned outfit called off its protests following the signing of an agreement with the government on submission of a resolution to the National Assembly about expulsion of the French ambassador. The Prime Minister said the TLP would have to approach the court of law for lifting of the ban imposed by the government last week when the banned outfit staged countrywide violent demonstration demanding eviction of the French ambassador over blasphemous caricatures of Islam's prophet in France. Earlier on Tuesday, Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid in a video statement claimed that the government had successful rounds of dialogue with the TLP, which had agreed to call off its protests. The Imran Khan government on Tuesday called a parliamentary vote on whether to expel the French ambassador 
and referred the resolution to a committee, and the session was adjourned till Friday. In the violent clashes last week, at least four police personnel lost their lives and more than 800 wounded. The Islamists said three of their members were also killed. Moving on, the U.S. backed Afghan Peace Conference on Turkey has been postponed due to the Taliban's non-participation. Media reports claimed on Tuesday. The meeting was scheduled for April 24 to fast-track an agreement between the Taliban and the Afghan government following Washington's announcement that foreign troops would leave Afghanistan by September 11 and not by May 1 deadline. The US-backed Turkey-Afghan peace conference has been postponed over known participation by the Taliban, according to media reports. The conference was scheduled for April 24 and was expected to see inclusive participation from parties to the Afghan conflict. The US, Turkey, Qatar and UN have reportedly attempted to convince the Taliban to attend the planned meeting in Turkey. But the group has insisted that the US first needs to implement the Doha Agreement before the start of the Istanbul Conference, meaning that the US needs to honor its agreement signed under the former President Donald Trump's administration to withdraw all US troops from Afghanistan by May 1. The Taliban and the Afghan government negotiators began peace talks last year in the Qatari capital of Doha, but progress was slow and violence continued to escalate in Afghanistan. The Taliban ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001 when they were ousted by US-led forces. Since then, they have wagged a long-running insurgency and still controlled wide swathes of territory. In news from Bangladesh, Bangladesh has opened a hospital dedicated to the treatment of COVID-19 patients in capital Dhaka amid a nationwide lockdown until April 28. Meanwhile, volunteers and businesses have come forward to help those in need by providing food handouts. Bangladesh has opened a hospital dedicated to the treatment of the COVID-19 patients in its capital, Dhaka, as authorities extended the country's lockdown until April 28. The original lockdown began on April 5 but it has been extended due to surging COVID-19 cases. According to local media, the hospital has 1,000 beds for patients and was opened since most local hospitals are now overwhelmed with coronavirus patients. Meanwhile, volunteers in Dhaka took the initiative to help those in need. A transgender volunteer organization comprising of students from the Dhaka University on Tuesday helped patients register and discharge at a local hospital. আমি একজন ট্রান্সজেন্ডার এবং আমাদের সংগঠনের পক্ষ থেকে আমরা এই লকডাউনের সময় ঢাকা মেডিকেলে করোনা ইউনিটে এই কাজগুলোই করি যে হচ্ছে আপনার অসহায় যে রোগীগুলো আছে সেই রোগীগুলোর জরুরি যে কোনো প্রয়োজনের কাজ এখান থেকে কোনো কিছু ক্যারি করে নিয়ে যাওয়া বা এমন একজন پیشنট আছে তার পক্ষে অ্যাম্বুলেন্স বা সিএনজি এখন নিয়ে যাওয়ার মতো টাকা নেই Meanwhile day laborers and poor hit by the lockdown queued up for food handouts distributed by a local bank on Monday, Bangladesh recorded 112 COVID-19 related deaths, its highest daily death toll from the pandemic. On Tuesday, the country's health ministry reported 4,559 new coronavirus cases. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka on Wednesday marked the second anniversary of the deadly 2019 Easter Sunday attacks that killed more than 270 people and wounded over 500. A two-minute of silence was observed across the nation by the top political leadership and religious groups. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa delivered a special statement in the parliament and said that all those responsible for the devastating attacks will be brought to justice. He said that the report and other documents prepared by the Presidential Commission have been referred to the Attorney General for legal action. Nine suicide bombers belonging to local Islamist extremist group National Tawhid Jamaat linked to Islamic State carried out coordinated blasts that tore through three churches and as many luxury hotels in Sri Lanka on the Easter Sunday on April 21, 2019. Rajpaksa said steps were being taken to prevent a recurrence of such acts of terrorism. Moving on to news from Nepal. 
Nepal has started administrating the second dose of Made in India Covishield vaccine, which is targeting those who had received the first dose from January 27 to February 22. This comes as Nepal, just like other neighbouring South Asian countries, is witnessing a surge in coronavirus cases and associated deaths. The process of administering the second dose of Made in India COVID Shield vaccine has begun in Nepal after the Himalayan nation started its vaccination campaign earlier this year. The second dose vaccination drive is targeting those who had received the first dose during a period between January 27 to February 22. The government of Nepal has administered the COVID Shield vaccine obtained from the government of India on grants. Nepal as of Wednesday confirmed 1,667 new COVID-19 cases, which also includes the country's former king, Gyanendra Beer Bikram Shah, and Queen Komal Devi Shah, who contracted the virus on Tuesday. As per media reports, the royal couples contracted the virus after coming back from the Kumbh Fair being held in India's Haridwar city. More news from Nepal. The three-day-long Setu Machindrana Jatra, one of biggest chariot festivals celebrated in Nepal's Kathmandu Valley, started on Tuesday amid a surge in COVID-19 cases in the country. One of the biggest chariot festivals celebrated in Nepal's Kathmandu Valley, the three-day-long Setu Machindrana Jatra started on Tuesday amid a surge in COVID-19 cases in the country. Hundreds of devotees flocked to Tindranath Pachala where the chariot was being built for the procession from last week. Flouting social distancing norms amid the COVID-19 pandemic, devotees pulled the chariot through various locations of the city, thereby increasing the possibility of widespread infection. The chariot procession honouring the god of rain is also known as Jana Baha Dhyan Jatra. In the procession, a skyscraping chariot of Setu Machindranath is pulled from place to place during the three days. Each day, when the chariot reaches its terminus, a group of soldiers fire their rifles into the air. <laughs> This comes as the government on Monday had decided to cap number of people to 25 in public gathering and making it mandatory to seek local authorities' permission before holding any events which would bring large number of people. The famous annual Hindu chariot festival of Rikuna Rat Yatra of Lord Lingraj was carried out without devotees in India's eastern Bhubaneswar city this week. Last year, the long-running tradition was not allowed to be held due to nationwide coronavirus lockdown. However, this year, the historic procession was carried out without any devotees, keeping in mind the rapidly rising coronavirus cases. The famed Hindu chariot festival of Rukuna Rath Yatra of Lord Lingaraj, an incarnation of Hindu god of destruction Shiva, was carried out without devotees in India's eastern Bhubaneswar city. Last year, long-running tradition was not allowed to be held due to the lockdown in the country to curb the pandemic. However, this year, the historic procession was carried out without any devotees, keeping in mind the rapidly rising cases of coronavirus. Priests said thousands of devotees used to gather in large numbers to attend the procession. They believe that getting a glimpse of the chariot is auspicious and that those who attend will be rewarded with happiness. But the authorities decided to keep the event a low-key affair this time. Now, due to COVID-19, uh, this year, Lord uh, Sri Lingaraj, uh, this annual Rathyatra festival is be being conducted without uh, devotees. This entire stage uh, 144 prevention order has been promulgated and no uh, devotee is being allowed uh, to come out. 144 की वजह से हम लोग घर में हैं घर घर से ही देख रहे हैं रथ यात्रा और पिछले साल पिछले साल नहीं हुआ था इसलिए रथ यात्रा भी नहीं हुआ था बट आज रथ यात्रा देख पा रहे हैं बिकॉज़ हम लोग सुरक्षित घर पे ही हैं 
According to legend, Lord Rama returned to his birthplace in India's Ayodhya after killing the demon Ravan in Sri Lanka. His family priests advised him to visit a karma kshetra, now Bhuvneshwar, and worship Lord Lingaraj to absolve himself of the sin. Lord Lingaraj, happy with Rama's utmost devotion and worship, comes in a chariot to meet him. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.